Hi, Margaret Randall here. Like so many writers who've published books in the last few months, the uh, coronavirus crisis has uh, stopped us from presenting them in bookstores and other venues across the country. My new memoir, just out from Duke University Press, I Never Left Home, poet, feminist, revolutionary, was published in early March. And I was just about to start uh, touring the country with the book when uh, the virus hit. I managed to get to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then everything else collapsed. So I'm here to invite you to order the book, read the book, and, um, and enjoy it until we can meet when this crisis is over, when we can meet in person. I'm an 83-year-old woman, uh, born in New York City. I grew up here on the Albuquerque, on the New Mexico desert, a landscape that's always been very uh, present in my work. Uh, then I moved to New York as a young woman in my early 20s, uh, lived there for four years among the abstract expressionists, uh, among the beat poets and Black Mountain poets, deep image poets had a child on my own, um, and then in 1961, uh, moved with that child, my son, uh, to Mexico, where I spent the next decade. In Mexico, I married a Mexican poet, Sergio Mondragon, and together we founded and edited a, a wonderful bilingual journal, El Cordon Plumado, The Plumed Horn. Um, this was a magazine that, uh, collected and presented the best new work of that era in English and in Spanish. We did a lot of translation. Um, in many ways, my life has been a bridge between cultures and that magazine, I think, was uh, a good example of that. Over the period of the next eight years, El Cordon published more than 700 uh, writers and artists and uh, from 35 countries. So. Uh, we published uh, Howl by Ginsburg for the first time in Spanish. We published um, poems by Ernesto Cardinal for the first time in English. And then uh, in 1969, uh, I was forced out of Mexico after the student uh, movement, the 1968 student movement in which I participated, forced underground for several months, then forced out of the country and ended up in Cuba with my four children. And uh, by that time, Sergio and I had separated. I was living with uh, an American poet, uh, Robert Cohen. And uh, I lived for the next 11 years in Cuba. That was also an exciting period, um, the second decade of the Cuban Revolution. I've often thought of that uh, decade as the glory years of the revolution. Uh, so much was changing so fast and there was a great deal of transparency about everything. Um, in 1979, I moved on to Nicaragua, where I um, worked for three and a half years at the beginning of the Sandinista experiment. So, uh, as I say, I've been fortunate to uh, have been in places where social change was taking place, to have participated in that social change, uh, and uh, to have learned a lot. I came home to the United States in 1984, hoping, hoping to live here in peace uh, as I grew older. Uh, but uh, that was not to be because I, um, I was almost immediately ordered deported by the US government. Um, they considered some of my writing to be, quote, against the good order and happiness of the United States. So I had a struggle on my hands uh, to remain in the country of my birth. That struggle uh, lasted for five years. I finally won that fight in 1989 and, um, and then settled in to, uh, to live here, to work here, to continue to write. I uh, took part also, of course, in, in the movements that, that have happened since throughout the 90s and, and 2000s. I'm going to um, share just a very brief uh, couple of paragraphs from 
the very beginning of my book, um, well, not the very beginning, because I, I do start in my grandparents' generation and write about my parents. But this is when I'm a teenager here on the New Mexican desert. When I was 15 and 16, one of my delights was taking the family's secondhand Studebaker to a spot along the old highway from Albuquerque going north, parking it and beginning to walk. I'd follow the rises and dips on a geological survey map, past where discarded beer cans and bottle caps revealed evidence of modern day life. I'd find a remote spot on the desert, take all my clothes off and sleep the night. As I closed my eyes and gave myself to darkness, I'd imagine I was a woman on that land before conquest claimed it. But I never felt I could be honest with my parents about where I went or what I did. I tell them I was spending the night at a girlfriend's house and the girlfriend that I was with a boy. My girlfriend lied for me as easily as I did for myself. Deceit was a well-learned social disease. So I hope that whets your appetite for more. Again, the book is beautiful. Uh, it's available from Duke University Press and from uh, Amazon.com or order it through um, your local independent bookstore if, if that's uh, operating at the moment. And until we can meet in person when this crisis is over, Thanks so much.